I wonder if we, if you, if I uh, are willing to consider changes are necessary in our lives if we are really going to see Jesus. Uh, responding to a questionnaire, an anonymous member of a church uh, writes, I'm sure that my religious background is similar to thousands of others brought up in a typical middle-class background. My family belonged to a church much as it would belong to a club. That doesn't mean that they didn't devote a lot of time and work to its concerns, but it was an activity, not a way of life. And I wonder if we who wish to see are really ready to treat the church as a way of life rather than as an activity. Because if we teach one another to treat the church like one of yet one more of our many activities, but we fail to lead one another into new life in Christ, which is the very being of the church. If we do that, we will have tragically missed the point. And the point is that Jesus cannot be seen from a distance. Jesus has to be followed. Whoever serves me must follow me. That's how he says it. And where I am, there must my servant be also. It's just, it isn't easy to come along. It never has been. Uh, week after week in the season of Lent, our Old Testament lessons have unfolded a God who keeps seeking and seeking and promising and promising and as a, of a people who won't come along. Uh, to Noah, God promised everything to, to never destroy creation again. And of Noah, God asked nothing. But somehow, the people of God were unable to make the way of God their way of life. So, so God came seeking again, this time promising Abraham and Sarah everything, countless descendants and a place for them to live and to be. And of Abraham and Sarah, God asked only that they listen. But somehow the people of God were unable to make the way of God their way of life. So God came seeking again, this time seeking out Moses on the mountain, offering to the people the 10 best ways to live and to love, asking only that they, they follow these ways. But somehow the people of God were unable to make the way of God their way of life. The problem it's not God's lack of promise. The, the promise is the people's unwillingness to come along with it. And today, we pick up on that drama between God and God's reluctant observers in the book of Jeremiah, where God speaks of a new covenant, a new promise. What is it of what Nadia read that makes it new? There's, there's nothing new about God here. What's new is a realization that for it to work, the people of God have to come along. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Laws about how to be behave, just not gonna take care of it. They may bring our activities closer to God, but they're not bringing us closer to God. What will do it is, is people who say we will to be God's people. What makes it new? It's new when it's in our heart and when our heart is in it. What's new is our coming along, acting without even reflecting on it. Whoever serves me must follow me is how Jesus says it. And where I am, there will be my servant also. You can't see Jesus from a distance. You have to follow. And that, that wouldn't be so bad if following didn't mean having to leave. Uh, following Jesus is from first to last a matter of letting go. And I, I think we so desperately want to hold on 
It's, it's the truth, I tell you, that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. You know, it's a topic of unending conversation with my clergy friends these days. What will the pandemic do to the church? What will happen when, if the all clear news is sounded loud and clear, Will there be life? Will there be new life in, in, in this sanctuary and, and in all the other sanctuaries and storefronts and auditoriums and house churches? Will the church be a life force and, and not a museum? I so pray that we will be relevant to the world and that we will be responsive to the Holy Spirit moving. I, I remember the renewed life of the church in the city and in the tri-state area after 9-11. People, especially young adults, flocking into the city's churches in quite amazing numbers back then. Uh, a genesis which can't be explained by how this church or that church was worshiping its style or its music style. There was this full continuum from classical to contemporary, from, from raucous to, to quiet and meditative and contemplative. But what was consistent in those vibrant churches was this sense of challenge, of, of meaning, of a call to serve Christ and to follow Christ. And and I'm sure that will be the case moving out of the pandemic. A sense of challenge and, and meaning of a call to serve Christ and to follow Christ. But are we gonna be willing to let go in order to follow Jesus? <laughs> this blood curdling scream tore a little girl's parents out of the kitchen into the living room where they found her trying desperately but unsuccessfully to pull her hand out of a, a large expensive vase. And they tried everything they could do to release her, but they couldn't get it out. She became so hysterical that finally they smashed it. And, and up from the shattered pottery, she raised a tight fisted hand in glee and showed the penny that she had spied at the bottom of the vase, which she had refused to let go at the expense of, of a far greater treasure. Are we willing to let go in order to follow? You know, we speak, I speak, we speak with such passion about how we want something new and something different in our lives. But it's so threatening to, to let go, to relinquish our control, to trust that we'll be recipients of God's grace. We're people who are taught to achieve. I mean, it's, it's the high achievers who succeed. It's the high earners we respect. It's the haves, it's not the have nots that are our heroes. And I'm not sure how that fits with Jesus' message that even the Messiah, the highest achiever, must lose his life, give it up, in order to receive the life beyond the cross, which is God's own doing, God's gift. And the message of the gospel is that he calls his own to follow in the same way. I will be their God and they shall be my people. There is um, one of those rerunning Peanuts uh, comic strips. In it, Charlie Brown is explaining to Lucy, everywhere I go, trouble follows me. Next frame. No matter what I do, someone is always bringing problems to me. 
next frame. Sometimes I just feel I can't take it anymore the way everyone brings all their burdens to me. And Lucy replies, what you need, Charlie Brown, is an unlisted life. I fear that sometimes we think that following Jesus, letting go, that it's just an invitation to get buried alive. I fear that, that that's there for us and to avoid being buried alive. We think that an unlisted life wouldn't be half bad. But you cannot see Jesus from a distance. And you cannot see Jesus when you're at a distance from his people. Whenever we see our membership in the church as an activity, we are going to risk being buried alive by all the activities, all the involvements, all the requests. And, and you're going to be tempted to trade it in for an unlisted life. But if God is written on our hearts and our hearts are in it, then we will be God's people. The church will be a way of life. And we will find, as Jeremiah found, the church, the people of God, to be a place to discover God, to, to discover fulfillment more than trouble, to discover forgiveness, a place to receive life and grace and meaning, a place to bear fruit, a, a place to find the strength to, to get out there and follow. Another child at bedtime wanted to be held by his mother. And when she reminded her little boy that the arms of God would be around him all night, the child replied, I know, but tonight I need a God with skin on. I don't think we need an unlisted life. I think that we need a God with skin on. If we've really seen Jesus, we will be a community with God written on our hearts. But the, the judge of our congregation's success, finally, is only in whether you find yourself losing your life, coming along and, and putting your heart in it. The measure of our success will be how much of God's skin you put on, how much we, the church, the body of Christ, become Christ's hands and mouth and mind and heart. We begin where, we end where we began. Are we ready to see Jesus? Amen. Let us pray. Help me to say yes. Lord, I'm, af I'm afraid of saying yes. Where will you take me? I'm afraid of the yes that entails other yeses. I'm afraid of putting my hand in yours because you're going to hold on to it. Lord, I'm afraid of your demands, but who can resist you? That your kingdom may come, not mine that your will be done, not mine. Help me to say yes. Amen.